family locked up. Pop's brother, 20, 25 years. Cousins, bro. Like, I got an aunt, all her sons, bro. She got like five, six sons, bro. All of them incarcerated. 30 years. Smacks. Bro, I, I calculated it one day. All her sons is doing a total of 150 years. So it's like I always been around it, but it was I was always kind of sheltered because of my pops. God forced me to sit down. Now, you're not getting bail. You're not going home. You have to sit down. Like, he forced me to sit down, bro. That helped me in every single aspect, bro. I was able to sit there and read. I was able to sit there and I got all these ideas. Sit there and write the shit down, yeah. bro. Sit there and become self-aware. Sit there and build a better relationship with my son, bro, with my family, bro, my For BM, sure. bro. Nigga, it's crazy because it's like, I had a better relationship with my son in jail than I did on the street, bro. Right. That should tell you something. You feel that me? you were doing something wrong out there, right? And, and exactly, like, bro, I was up, bro. And yeah. I'm thinking I'm doing everything right. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I'm your host B. Luke. I got a special guest with me today. Why don't you tell the people your name, where you're from, and a little bit about yourself. My name DJ Clout from the south end of Boston. Not South Boston. <laughs> south end of Boston. Yeah, DJ content creator. Okay, so let's talk about the content. Talk about where they can find you. Let's content boy group or DJ Clout on everything. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. Why'd you want to make that point to differentiate South End versus Southie? What's the difference? Two different parts uh, of the city and they kind of got the same name and people get it mm -hmm. misconstrued. Oh, you're from Southie and right. Southie is South. Boston, yeah. and I'm not from South Boston. I'm from the South End. So talk about what was the South End like for you growing up? If you're not from the South End, you wouldn't understand. We get a bad rep, I feel like, like, because we live South End right next to Prudential, mm -hmm. South End right next to Newberry. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So people think like, ah, oh, you live in the South End, you, you got it good, like you live a good life. Nine times out of 10, bro, a lot of people from the South End don't, you feel me? Like this mm -hmm. project, you feel me? Like this Lenox Street. Yeah. Ruggles, you feel me? Like shit be going on in the South End, bro, on that tip. And like, if you not if you not from there, you wouldn't know. And I don't so really just know. Just talk what they got a little bit on. about Boston in general, right? You talked about the South End. Like, talk mm -hmm. about the whole landscape of Boston and just like, what's that for like for people? Maybe they're watching in in New York or shit. You never know. It's you two. People could be anywhere. <laughs> Boston is a a small city. Everybody know each other, and that's a good and bad thing. And if you're from the city, you know what that means. But yeah, it's a good and bad thing. Crab in a bucket mentality with yeah. the city. Um, but everybody know each other, and even that, you feel me? Everyone's trying to do something, bro. It's just inner city, bro. Rappers, artists, you feel me? Everyone's trying to do something. Mm -hmm. And it's like growing up, everybody knows each other, like really knows each other. Right. You get what I'm saying? So it's like once you start to get to a certain point with whatever you're doing, bro, mm -hmm. it's like they're like, oh, I really know you. You get what I'm saying? And it's like the support kind of lacks in that sense. All right. But it's a big city. Yeah, it's like the way it's a I look. It's big, small city. Yeah, that's how I always look at it. It's like uh, the biggest small city or the smallest big city type. Right. But it's like in right. that range, it's not even a million right. people. And Brooklyn alone, I think, has two and a half million, right? right? And that's a section of New York, yeah, right? Right, right, right. So when we up here, it's like, you know, we get lumped in the Northeast. But uh, we got our own little, you know, style and everything right. out here, too. Man. And there's black people here. Like, I don't, I don't a lot of, Yeah, they don't, they don't like, show that in the movies much. We I'm have, what, Boston, Blue Hill Ave. Like, you feel <laughs> me? Like, everybody in here, you feel me? We black, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? Like, yep. it's just black and the people out, in Boston. Outskirts too, man. Randolph, yeah, Brockton. I mean, you go to Brockton. You yeah. feel me? Like, yo, there's black people out here. You feel me? But from the outside looking in, they Boston, they hit. You know, it's a sports city and it's a school city. Like, let's the be colleges, real. Like, yeah. colleges, Harvard. Yeah, you feel me? Um, Northeastern. Like, that's the. I think that's why a lot of the stuff gets a little swept that's under the rug, exactly. too, because they're trying to get people to come here, go to school here, work yeah. here in the, in the great hospitals, you know what right, I mean? Right, Doctors right, from right, all right, over right, the world, we got right, right. We got the best of everything, yeah. and this has nothing to do with us. And we originated me? a lot of things, first, right? Re shout out to Revere Boxing Club. I don't know if you can see it, but first public beach in the country. I don't oh. know if you knew that, Revere Beach, right? We got, a, I think, the first underground train station. There's so bro, many I'm about firsts. To fuck you up. We got the first <laughs> what? Let me let me see, because I just posted it the other day, bro. <laughs> I just posted it the other day, just like realizing yeah, this shit. First woman this, first... First... First, uh, what's, you know, college, is Harvard. The Massachusetts you know. Constitution was ratified in 1780 and is the oldest current currently enforced written constitution in the world yeah so you know we got we started this shit here. like yeah. we started this shit bro you feel me like in yep. the whole world bro 
the oldest constitution, 1780. Yeah. Massachusetts. Yep. Commonwealth. Even uh, I think Ben Franklin, before he took his his self to Philly, he was here under the shadow of his older brother. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I read Bro, that the other day. So. And it's like for sure, and it goes way back. Yeah. And a lot of roots here too. Man. Yeah. But we here, like we here. Yep. You feel me? Like we here. <laughs> We're trying to do it, man. So talk a little bit about like at home, right? Are you an only child? You got siblings? <sighs> what, what's the home look like home, growing home. up? Did you have both home. parents, man? Great family, two parent household, mom, dad. Parents been married for fucking too long. I don't even know if they like each other still. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they love each other, but you, you don't know if they like each other. They love each other, but they don't like each other. Only boy, got four older sisters. Okay. So just the youngest boy in a house full of women, but my dad was there. So talk, talk about that, being that boy in the house full of women. I mean, do you, is it something that you carry with you today? Like you, like you respect women, of the, course, the struggle, of course, you know, when you go your way to be it's, nice? It's a different, it's a different I don't know, it's like a double-edged sword, like, um, growing up, being around all women, you mm -hmm. feel me? Like, of course, you learn to respect them, but you also hate them at the same time, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have no brothers to fight and beef with, right. you feel me? I fought with my sisters, <laughs> so, but I love them, though, and, and I, I carry that with me, and how I move, you feel yeah. me? And everybody I'm around, how I treat the women in my life, you feel Absolutely. me? Like, it's just that love and nurture and, yeah. Absolutely, from, and don't sleep on the... Uh... On the older sisters because what? before you get to the puberty, bro, man, they, they older than you, they're stronger than you too, bro, man. What? I had some of the craziest battles <laughs> with my sisters. You feel me? Mind you. Shout out to the queens, though. What? My sisters beat a lot of you motherfuckers' <laughs> ass. No so bullshit. Where, where did you go to um, elementary school? Elementary, I went to JQS. JQUS. Mind you, all my sisters, all my all my siblings went to JQUS. School in Chinatown. Did you get in trouble? How were you as a student? I was a good student. I was a class clown though. I why always, do you think that? Why do you think that was? Being the only boy in the crib, you feel <laughs> me? Like I had no excitement but to like bother my sisters, mess with my sisters. Right. I don't know. That's just me. You get what right. I'm saying? No, like that's cool because like what you do with your content, right. like your stuff's right. funny, bro. Right. So I can see right. that. Yeah, for right. sure. Yeah, bro. And and. And I was asking this question in my videos the other day, like, how long you been a creative? Right. And I feel like I've been creative my whole life, bro. Like, like, I just started posting it years ago, bro. Mm -hmm. I've been making content my whole life. Right. Like, I've been pranking <laughs> my sisters. I've been doing all types of, like, just fun shit because not having a brother and not having someone mm -hmm. you could relate to, I just had to find that, that aspect of peace and, and like, not even peace, bro. Just excitement, bro. In yeah. the crib. You yeah. feel me? Because I got a tight home, so that's how I, I grew up, just bothering my sisters and shit like that. Go. So, so yeah. what about high school? Where do you go to high school at? High school, freshman year? All right, cool. Let's back it up. Mm -hmm. Went to JQS. Chinese. It's a Chinese school, bro. I learned Mandarin and all that growing okay. up. Okay, so it, is, is it predominantly... Chinese? Yeah, it's okay. ninety percent mother Chinese, okay. Asian, Mandarin, bro. Like I learned Mandarin, I took Mandarin from like the first grade to the fifth grade, bro. Ninety percent Asian kids, Chinese kids, bro. And then there's a little sprinkle of black. Wow. So Hispanic. how was that overall experience, man? That's kind of got to be kind of different. It was. Too. It was. It was cool. Like I, I learned to appreciate it now. Yeah. But like growing up, like I got clowned on in the hood. Like mm -hmm. you go to that Chinese school, bro. At that time, I'm like, yo, this shit suck. But now I, pre I appreciate it, bro. Just being able to be around different cultures and Absolutely. um, just understanding different, just different people in their culture and sense, bro. So what's the transition to high school? From elementary to middle, middle school, is where I kind of took a turn. I moved, I moved down south with my pops. Eighth grade, my eighth grade okay. year. Right. I did sixth and seventh up here, New Mission Middle School, small school. And then I went, I was getting in trouble. I was getting in trouble. My pops was from down south, so he owned a crib down south. Mm -hmm. So he was just like, I don't know, he made an executive decision, you feel me? Like, trying to change my trajectory. Yep. And he took me down south, eighth grade. So we went to Selma, Alabama. And I did my eighth grade year out there. I mean, how, how did you feel about that when you had that convers what? conversation? Did he ask you or was this like, I'm telling you, son? Like, how did that go and how did you feel? I don't know, bro. Like, looking back, it, it couldn't have just been that. Like, it was probably like family issues mm -hmm. and shit like that. But it was just like, I guess his decision, like, I right, go down south with you. I'm going to take you down south. 
And I guess he didn't like the path I was going. You get uh -huh. what I'm saying? And he just made an executive decision to go down south. It wasn't really no asking me, bro. You feel <laughs> me? Just... Like, it was, yo, we doing this. Mm -hmm. He told me, like, two weeks before. Wow. So that must have uprooted your whole life. I was devastated. I had a little situation going on. A little girlfriend, and that right. shit crushed oh. me, bro. My first heartbreak. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that puppy love. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Uh, no That's got to be a rough one, bro, but at that age, I'm too. Thinking, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking life's over. I'm like, yo, I'm moving. <laughs> She's like, don't move. I'm, I'm like, I'm going. Is that somewhere that you've been a lot back and forth? Alabama? What you say? Um, Alabama? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Growing you, up. You know like people been, down there? Your family? You yeah, I got to? family out there. Went back and forth a few times, but never really, like, stayed. Pops made that move for you. How long did that last? And what was that like? Starting a new school and a new state? I stayed state? out there a year. Okay, I so stayed out there a year. Eighth grade? Yeah, eighth grade. I did my whole eighth grade year out there. And that shit, it kind of... It changed. It just was a part of my story. Being a kid from Boston, mind you, I was, yep. I was show this shit. Right, mind right. you, motherfuckers from Alabama, I don't know what y'all be eating, <laughs> but the motherfuckers is big. What? <laughs> you, bro, I'm in eighth grade, bro. Like, motherfuckers is big as shit. And I'm like, damn, like, I got to learn to fight. I got mm. to start doing some push-ups, something. Motherfuckers <laughs> is big as shit. But that shit helped me in my path because it was just something different. Yeah. And it kind of made me not come out my shell, but like embrace who I was, going to a new school. However they tried to, they picked on me, bro. The mm -hmm. Accent, I didn't, they didn't even call me by my name, bro. They called me Boston. Yeah. They like, oh, you got an accent, you small as shit. <laughs> Cause y'all fucking eating whatever the fuck y'all eat out there. Just like being around that, it, it helped me come out of my shell in a way and embrace who I was. Cause at first I was trying to act like them, try to fake an accent, <laughs> trying to dress how they dress. Sure, that must have been a thing the whole trying to fit in because like you said yeah. too you went to this yeah. chinese school for yeah. so long you're yeah. a black dude now you're yeah. you know down there you're from right. the, you know what i mean you're right. always kind of that and and i always kind of felt left out you feel me in the chinese school it's like ah, right, it's because i'm black I, i'll never get in with y'all but then i moved out there and it's like damn i don't even fit in out here you right. feel me and it's just like damn Right, like, right. I don't fit in nowhere, you feel me? What about when like, you went down there, do, do any sports or anything? Eh. All right, cool. Sports, sports, sports. All right. I thought I was going to the league. I had hoop dreams mm -hmm. once upon a time. Mind you, I was nice, like, coming up. Um, my pops always took me to, um, I play high park basketball. If you know, you know, every good basketball player play high park basketball. Like, elementary, middle school, I was a hooper, like, I... Hundred hours at the park, bro. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like I lived at the park hooping. Yeah, like that was my my passion. That's what I wanted to do. And I went down south, and that shit changed. What What about it? Bro. Did you just not interest you, or was it the level of talent? Was a little them dudes being so big, like you were saying? Bro, I'm thinking I'm nice, right? Cause I'm I'm short as shit, but I'm nice. You feel me? Like not on some handle shit, but I can shoot my. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I got my gun license. I can shoot. <laughs> they always play with the the older dudes. I thought I was doing something. I went out there. Motherfuckers is windmilling. Motherfuckers is, yo, throw me an alley. Mind you, we're in eighth grade, bro. We're in eighth grade. I'm about to like 80 pounds, 90 pounds. Those Motherfuckers is 200, dunking. And I'm like, yeah, this hoop shit ain't for me. <laughs> so what happens? Where? You, why do you come back? Is it just you just finished the eighth grade down there? Now you want to come back and do high school? And at that time, I don't know, Pop's decision. You get what Same I'm thing. saying? It, I was the kid, bro. I didn't really make no decisions. So I did that year out there, came back, did high school, started high school out here, and yeah. And how does that go? Did did you end up finishing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, freshman year was crazy. I went to four, four, four high schools in one year. Okay, what what's happening? Fighting, just do, like kicked out, skipping. No, nah, I was a good student. I was a good student. First school I went to, mind you, I was trying to go to Metco. That didn't end up working out because I came back so late. Mm -hmm. So. Got put in the first school I could, went to Brighton High, end up getting into, mind you, and it's crazy because I, I adapted the way I dressed and, and you feel me, just how my mannerism, just being out there. So mm -hmm. coming back was a whole nother switch. It's like you were outsider again. <laughs> uh, outsider again. You get what I'm saying? So I'm dressing in, in fucking first day of school. I'm dressing like preppy. You get what I'm saying? Because that's the drip out there. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like you throw your motherfucking polo on, you got your slacks. And you feel me? You got some Sperry's and that's drip. The bitches is jacking that out right. there. I come back, motherfuckers got, it's not even purple jeans then, but it's like 
True from religion. religion. <laughs> Motherfuckers got Jordans. Yep. I'm like, damn, like, I ain't got no fucking Jordan money. You feel me? Like, motherfuckers is clowning me on the way I dress. I always got clown, bro. And I wasn't the biggest. I wasn't, I was the smallest shit, bro. Mm -hmm. But I know you You couldn't out joke me. Right. You feel me? As a, as a kid, bro, I know you couldn't out joke me. Like, I'm a, I don't, I don't play a game I can't win. I ain't gonna fight you, bro. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But you want to joke? We can joke all day. <laughs> I'm a joke. So, and that's what I learned even being in Alabama, bro. Like, I got out a lot of shit with, with, with how I talk, bro, my jokes. You get what I'm saying? So, coming back, going to Brighton, niggas were clowning me for, 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 for what I was wearing, bro. But the bitches fucked with me because <laughs> they, they, they fucked with me, bro, because I was a funny nigga, bro. I've always mm -hmm. been a funny nigga, bro. You feel me? And they're like, niggas would joke on me, and then I would just flame them. Right. You talking about my you have, a, you have a flaming back so bad, they now want to fight. Yeah, and, and, and that's kind of how that's how, how I was leading up to it. So, on the road student, bro. Like, mm -hmm. it was to the point where I was helping motherfuckers with they work. Yeah. You feel me? I finished my shit. I helped the shorties with they work. Shorties I like, I help them with they work. Right. You feel me? And I feel like niggas like didn't like that. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, bro. Long story short, I got jumped in the bathroom. I got jumped in the bathroom at Brighton. But mind you, like. Alabama, I realized, like, all right, let me, you feel me? I started doing my push-ups and shit, got my weight up a little <laughs> bit, came back, and I wasn't going for that. So, you feel me? A little little altercation turned, turned, escalated. Got, got <laughs> escalated to the point where, like, my peoples was just like, all right, we got to get you out of that school, bro. One thing led to another. Niggas is bringing niggas up there, you feel me? And it's like, I ain't in the streets like that. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I know people, bro. I got family from everywhere, bro. But that's not me. I don't, right. You feel me? I don't, I don't carry that's myself good. like that's that, bro. Up. I never was into that. So it was like... GPS signal lost. Damn. Oh, they, bad, that's bro. the feds, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, turn that leaf. I'm like, yeah, this... Yeah, I'm good. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'll, I'll fight you all day, bro. Mm -hmm. But once you start um, threatening my life, you feel me? Like guns and all this yeah. other shit, bro. It's not even that deep. So I got out of Brighton, went to City on the Hill. That shit was cool. That shit was... If you... If you're from the city, bro, you know City on the Hill, man. Charter school. Okay. Um, Did you start balling up again over there? Nah, or not I even? already you left just... ball away. Like, after <laughs> like that Alabama, dream was I'm dead. like, yeah, I'm good. This ain't for me. So what about, like, at this time? Are you, like, starting to, like, do things high school kids do? Like, are you smoking weed? Are you partying? What, what else is what's going on there? What am I doing at that time? I don't think I'm smoking weed yet. I'm really I'm really in my school books, bro, and just, just fucking with the women, bro. When do you start getting... In trouble with the law, right? What what starts happening? All right, this is how it happened. Always been a hustler. I used to sell fucking candy at church. <laughs> I think like middle, like middle school, high school, I started getting into reselling kicks, mm -hmm. reselling the iPhones and shit. I was doing that, making my money off that. And I think I was around like 15, 14, 15. Mind you, I ain't getting into trouble before that. Mm -hmm. Just like neighborhood shit, like you, you fucking... Throw an apple at somebody, run around the corner, sh little shit <laughs> yeah, like that, yeah, but yeah. nothing like too serious. My first real incident was after I got robbed. After that day, I'm like, I I'll never get robbed again. Mm -hmm. And that shit just put a battery on my back. Cause it's like, I was trying to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to do legit shit. Right. You feel me? Buy shit for here, flip it. You feel me? Hustling, yeah, bro. Yeah, absolutely. At 14, at, at 13, 14, bro, having bands, you feel me? Legally and just. Selling candy at church, being a kid and, and trying to get my money, bro, the right way. Growing up, got bullied for not having the kicks. So I'm like, all right, let me let me go get the kicks, bro. And always had that hustle mindset. So after I got raw, bro, yeah, I just kind of took a different turn. That was the one thing that, like, I can say was the turning point where I I started getting in trouble. Yeah. Because after that, I'm just like, uh, right, it's this easy to take nigga shit. All right, cool. I turned into a jack boy. That was my that was my thing. Yeah. So Is that that's what you, you got yeah. caught up for? Yeah. yeah for yeah. DY with DYS and stuff? Yep. Okay, so what happens there? First time Eventually? I got booked, nah, nah. All my shit was like all my shit like I slipped through the cracks, bro. Got booked. And this is all within like a year, two years, bro. I done got booked like four or five times. So just I guess talk about that first time in DY. It was cause that's an experience. I don't care. Like my first time was two weeks, but I swear, man, it felt like I, so I came home with so many stories, it felt like I was I there forever, bro. In that shit. It is a different experience, man. When you ain't never that 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 door closed behind you. DYS. I was in DYS for like a week. Mm -hmm. Two weeks max. Mind you, my bail was forty dollars. 
<laughs> Mind you, I had a hundred dollars on me, two hundred dollars on me. Right. I couldn't bail myself out because I was a juvenile, mm. and my parents was like, "Yo, I'm gonna teach him a lesson." Let you sit. Man, they ain't teach me no lesson, man. They taught me that. I ain't gonna lie, DYS was fun. Yeah. But it's always worse in your head. Then you get there, you make you the get most there, of it. It's like, oh, this shit. Where this was shit you at? Is Canterbury. Okay. And um. Like Rosendale? Dorchester, Rosendale. Rosendale. Yeah. I don't know where the fuck. Yeah, it's I at. think it is. Camp- yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Dorchester, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Something Rosendale. like that. My job. I, I, I pulled in. I pulled in a parking lot the other day, literally like three days ago, and I'm like, damn. Mm-hmm. Like I was booked here, and it was fun only because I wasn't from nowhere. You if you're from somewhere, like I didn't have, I didn't beef with niggas, bro. Like, so all this shit was fun. They're like, what you here for? Nigga stealing. <laughs> you feel me? Like right. stealing from the store. So it was fun. So was then you fun. get out. They're I thinking they're teaching you a lesson. You're kind of like, man, that didn't me, teach me anything. You stay doing what that, you was doing. That kinda. shit taught me like, how to be more slick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, really and truly, because I was still young in the mind, bro. Exactly. You feel me? Like, I didn't really get hit with no shit to mm-hmm. where it's like, all right, this shit's serious. It was fun to me. I'm right. there playing video games with niggas and niggas yeah. telling stories and shit. Like, yo, this shit like hit. Yeah. Nope. You feel me? Like, so it was fun to me. You feel me? At that time, it was definitely fun to me. Now... What a, anybody uh, like as far as family? You the first person like in your family kind of dealing with that? Incarcerated? Yeah. Did you have uncles locked up? Man, anything like anything, anything and it's like crazy because I, I don't really get into it, and I never really been around it so much. Where it's like I he influenced me, right? But bro, family locked up. Pop's brother, 20, 25 years, yeah. straight. Cousins, bro. Like I got an aunt, all her sons, bro. She got like five, six sons, bro. All of them incarcerated, yeah. bro. 30 years, smacks. Bro, I, I calculated it one day just on some random shit, bro. All her sons is doing a total of 150 years. Damn. Shit like that, bro. So it's like I always been around it, but it was I was always kind of sheltered because of my pops, bro. Yeah. He kind of knew what was going on. And even my pops, bro, he was into it back in the day. Mm-hmm. But you feel me? He turned the leaf, changed his life, bro. And was on some family shit. And that's the only reason why I was sheltered from a lot of the shit. Everything I got into, it was because of me, bro. It wasn't because yeah. of my upbringing or nothing, mm-hmm. bro. It was because of me. Yeah, that takes a man to be responsible and not well, try to blame yeah, everybody nigga, else. nigga, you like, oh, I came, know. nigga, I came from a great home, bro. Like, dogs, nigga. Raw Wave got a song, like, um, not even Raw Wave. It's um, Honcho. Nigga said, mama raised me right. I did wrong on my own. Yeah. You feel me? And that's a fact. Bro. Well, luckily, you didn't do wrong enough to the point exactly. where there's no turning exactly, back, bro. Exactly, bro. So. And, and, and exactly, bro. So just talk about that a little bit, because since we on the subject, we talk about DYS, man. I noticed the, the shirt right there. So Reconstruct the Youth. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? Give the, you know, Type give it the shit. promo it deserves, bro. Yeah, man. Reconstruct the Youth, <laughs> man. It's a local brand, experimental, two young kids, bro. I met them the other day, literally last week. Last week, bro, they doing a brand, experimental, and Reconstruct the Youth, and they gave it to me off the strength, bro. And, and I, I chose to wear this today. You feel me? I had this shit picked out. <laughs> So you what does that me? mean to you when you, I mean that's a profound even just a statement right yeah, there. You know? Um reconstruct the youth, bro, like and it's really the reconstruction, bro. Cause it's a lot of shit that it's not even us, bro. A lot of this shit is generational curse, bro. Like I wasn't firsthand affected by my right. people's being locked for me because I wasn't yeah. around them when they was doing their dirt, but just to sit like, oh, my cousins is locked. My, my cousin's doing 100 years. My my uncle yeah. did 20 years straight. My you feel me? Like my pops is and it's like, that's the reconstruction we need to break, bro. That's the generational curse, oh. even without really knowing, bro. Talk about those cousins, though. Just was their father around part of the picture, too? Or? Nah, and even their situation. Because it seems like a difference. Like, even just having, even, you know, whatever Pops is doing, Pops is doing, you know, mm-hmm. nobody's perfect, but still just having somebody there, man. Um, it seems like there's always a big difference, man. I can't really speak on on, on, on their story, bro, because I can't, I don't really fully like, know yeah, it, bro. Like, you to do it from it. Yeah, yeah, bro, literally, like, Pops knew what was going on, and I was sheltered, bro. I, I ain't even know. Like, I'm going to my cousins, dabbing them up, nigga, they fucking selling, you feel me? They got hit with a Rico back then, bro. Yeah. 2013, 2014, Damn, you feel me? Free to cousins. Got caught with a million dollars in cash, bro. Your cousins is really was really into that, bro, and I'm not knowing. Right. You feel me? I'm looking up cousin. Family cookouts and shit like that. I'm thinking everything's, you feel <laughs> they me? They all cool with you. Right, you really feel me? So I'm not really knowing what's going on. So, no, no. so, but back to reconstruction, though, it's like, that's that's the part of, and that's the re, like the re is the most. Like a and, rewiring and the of the, re all is of The re is the most important part, you feel me? Like the, the, um, 
coming back into to society, bro, just doing something different, bro, yeah. just reconstructing what's going on, bro. Because you can build anything you want. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But we got to reconstruct something different. You yeah. got to be the change that you want to see, bro. Absolutely. You feel me? And it's like, it's more so about the youth, bro. Like, having that, that kid that's, that's growing up, they're going to be the ones, they're the future, bro. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And... And they need the to hear this shit. They they need to be the ones because their minds are evolving, bro. They're mm -hmm. gonna pick up on whatever's going on, bro. You feel me? Being around these type of people, I'ma eventually fall into that, bro. Yeah. So that's kind of why I like even from back then, I'm like I I don't want to get into that. You feel me? Like I realized that wasn't for me. Like I knew it wasn't for me. When when mm -hmm. when niggas is joking on me and I come back at them and and now niggas want to pull out straps and yeah, now niggas yeah, want to yeah, shoot. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, you started this shit. You right. feel me? And I'm just like, all right, that's the mindset. And that's how easily this shit can go. And I was man enough at that time to like, nah, this ain't for me. Niggas gonna be like, oh, that's soft. That's, yeah. oh, you you a punk, you a bitch. Cool, nigga, I'm living. You feel me? Get what I'm saying, bro? Because I know how this shit can get. Absolutely. And No, the, new, kids, the youth need to hear that, though, for sure. And they lose their life over nothing, bro. Yep, over a joke, bro. You get what I'm saying? Like, over, over petty money, over... Jealousy over shorty, bro. Niggas is losing yeah. their life over women, bro. Over stupid shit. Talk to me about the the music. When does the DJ in? When does the interest? Why DJ and Everybody's right, cool, a rapper. Cool, why? Cool. Like, what's up with um, the DJ thing? Content started before the DJ, though. Okay. Always been making content, but it's funny. I never had a phone growing up. Mm -hmm. I never had a phone growing up. My pops, my peeps was like, I had a phone. I ain't gonna lie. I had the phone, iPod Touch, but I ain't never had no service. You <laughs> feel me? Never had no service. I was a Wi-Fi dude. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Pulling up to the spot for the Wi-Fi. I always had a phone, and I never could like post shit. So I always used to just record shit, bro. And go back to the crib and just like show niggas like, yo, I did this, I did this, <laughs> and just looking for myself, bro. Like right. just recording shit. So the content started first, started DJing, went to a party, bro. I never was into parties. I went to the Love Affair. If you know, you know it. Went to the Love Affair. This was like 2016, but I was never into parties. I was a baller's life kid, bro. So never was into the party. So I finally went to a party, bro. I'm in high school and I'm just like, yo, this shit's lit. Like I never been to a party, you feel me? Only party I went to, baby showers, family functions and shit. Right. So I went to an actual party and this shit was mad people at Shea Vu's, bro. Um, mm -hmm. There was mad people there, and I'm like, yo, this shit is lit. Like, I felt a part of something, right. not for once, but like, I felt a part of something, bro. You feel me? Not even knowing nobody in there. And I'm like, yo, everybody's in sync. We all listen to the same shit. And I'm like, all right, like, who's playing the music? Like, how, where does the music, bro? I didn't know nothing about <laughs> a DJ, bro. I'm like, where the fuck is the music coming from? <laughs> so I went there for the party, for the shorties and shit. Bro, by the end of the night, I sat there, and I, once I realized, Okay, people is DJing and mixing this shit. I sat at that at that DJ booth for the rest of the time mm -hmm. and sat there and watched them. And I'm like, yo, that shit's lit. I'm seeing the colors. I'm seeing the shorties around the DJs. I'm like, oh, this shit's lit. Like, <laughs> you feel me? So that kind of sparked my interest. And then sophomore year, I went to Snowden and I met, I met, I met a friend and he was already DJing. So we clicked like this. Mind you, I didn't even like bro at first. So we clicked like this once I found out. He was a DJ and he just showed me, he gave me, showed me the ropes, bro. Like after school type shit, I'm, I'm bringing my little DJ board to school <laughs> at nice. lunch. You feel me? DJing, bro. Like, nice. so I took a whole year and really like put my focus and put my, put my all into that shit. Cause it's something I wanted to do. Do you think like having something like that is important, especially at that age, especially if you're trying to do the right thing and stay away from it, the kind of. definitely is important, bro. <laughs> like that's, that's the main important like, that's one of the most important things, bro, because it's like, we're from a small city, bro. We're from the city of Boston, bro. There's no, out, a lot of these cities, bro, and a lot of, um, and this goes into reconstructing the youth, bro, like, showing them there's something else. Right. There's something else, bro. You yeah. feel me? Like, there's ways to make legit money. There's ways to have fun. There's ways to be a cool nigga. You feel me? Because that's all the shit that the youth really want. Right. I want. I want to have the shorties. I want to be lit. I want to get money. I don't really want to look over my shoulder. And, and motherfuckers won't tell you, bro. A lot of people into it, a lot of street niggas into it. They make it seem cool, but they don't want to fucking look over their shoulder, bro. Right. Have to go to the store and have a shite. Nobody want to live like that, right. bro. Once I found that lane, I'm like, oh, this shit can give me everything I want. I ran with that shit, bro. And that's why I still go to, so hard with this shit. Because I'm showing niggas like, yo, you can do all of that shit, bro. Absolutely. Do something legal. Do something positive, bro. 
and have a good time, bro, and there's something else to do, bro. I think that's super important, too, because I feel like it's one thing, especially talking to, like, younger people, like, don't sell drugs because right, it's right, right. bad, right? right? But you're not giving them an alternative. Like, right. oh, stay at school, but, right. like... All right, but yeah, not school's right. not for everybody. Right. That's not fun. It starts, but then it's like, yo, right. you could do, you know, this, this, and that. And and, and and a main important thing is is constructive criticism, bro. Mm-hmm. People will tell you what not to do a hundred times, right? But won't give you something to do, right? Absolutely. Oh, don't go do this. So what do I do? I don't know. Just go, don't go do that. So I'm gonna go do that if that's right. all I know, bro. Well, they'll you give you me? a thousand reasons to not do something. To oh, not you do know, something, the, bro. You just looking for one reason to, for someone to kind of encourage me? you, man. Encourage your friends, man. Bro, all that. <laughs> that's all it take, bro. Like that's encouragement, bro, and just a different outlet, bro, can save a life, Absolutely. bro. Can save a whole generation. Can save a whole hood, bro. You get what I'm saying? A whole group of friends, bro. Yeah. Finding something to do that's positive, bro. For sure. What would be like your main message to the youth? Get around the right people. You are your comp- the company you keep, for sure. You are the company you keep. Get around the right people and just... Main important thing, bro, especially for my black men, bro, I can't, I can't really... Not I can't speak on the women, but I'm a black man. I went through right. shit as a black man in, in, in America, bro. Communication, bro. Communication, and, and I don't like saying communication is key. Communication is crucial, bro. Communication, bro. A lot of shit, and I feel like majority of everything can be solved with communication, bro. Yeah. Coming, meeting somebody at their level, bro, and it's like, fuck all the ego, fuck all the pride, fuck all that other shit, bro. Communication, bro. Yep. That's all it takes, bro. That's right now. And Absolutely. It's communication, bro. Like, everything revolves around communication, bro. So, just figuring out how to communicate, healthy coping mechanisms, stuff you like to do, bro, and... And people like to say, like, oh, I just forget about it, bro. I smoke weed. I do. That's not a health, healthy. That's a coping mechanism, right. but it's not a healthy coping mechanism. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Finding healthy coping mechanisms to go through shit because we all going through shit, bro. So talk about some of, like, what you would describe as your health. I mean, work for me, like mm-hmm. working out, mm-hmm. you know, whatever yeah. it may be. So, and I know you had mentioned God earlier, too, mm-hmm. in church and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's something that's been yeah, um, a big part of, like, your life growing, growing up, up. My different... Healthy coping mechanisms, bro, was basketball. Yeah. Growing up, you feel me? Like, bro, I would be at the fucking court for. I do that shit like a shift, bro. Hell yeah. I'd be there all day from from out of school to to time I gotta be in the crib. As black men, that's a lot of our coping mechanism at first, but then it gets it's starting to get real. You get what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm not going to the league. I got I got I'm dealing with shit. Got bills. Once you realize a lot of that shit ain't 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 can't cut it. You kind of like go a different way, but healthy coping mechanisms, working out. And I learned that in in Alabama, bro. Absolutely. I like reading, bro. So talk a little bit about the the church. Is that was that something big in your family growing up? I know you mentioned yeah, you were yeah. selling Grew candy up. at church. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Grew up very heavily church inspired home. Is that something that's still part of your life? Most definitely, bro. And it's not so much church; it's just God in general, because. I see what he he did for me in my life. Like I'm saying, there's a hundred instances where yeah. one wrong turn or one wrong move or I feel like everything in my life, I should have been dead already. Because a hundred times I could have been dead. So I just like, and I used to push away from God, you feel me, just growing up, like, oh, that shit not cool. Mm-hmm. And just now growing up and, and, and just understanding more and just gaining wisdom and just, just going through everything I've been through just realizing like everything happened for a reason, bro. And Absolutely. and it's not my plan, it's really God's plan. You get what I'm saying? So really like stop running. Like I had to stop running from yeah. God. No, that's that's big, especially yeah. when you're going through tough times too and we don't yeah. see it. You yeah. just gotta be like, you yeah. know what, this is just putting yeah. me through. You gotta have faith because even with me being a little older too, it's like every time I've had like these setbacks, bro. I come out of it on the other end, right. like, better. I, always, right. I get, like, I lost my job. I got a better, better job, job, right? right. I right. lost a short. I got a better short. Even, right. right. Nah, it's literally. Like, literally. So yeah. it's important to have that, you know, and believe that that's going to happen again because, you know what, you're going to have down times and up your whole life. It's never going to stop. Well, it's yeah. going to be ups and downs. But, like, our actions kind of control the consequences of right. these ups and downs, right. right? Right. And put it all in perspective. So speaking of which, though, you finish high school, right? Mm-hmm. What's, what's the next move? I mean, do you get a job? Do you plan to do any college or is it like? Straight out of high school, finished high school. My focus was 
I started taking the DJ shit serious only because I had one foot in the streets, one foot being a DJ. I was out one night with my with my mans. Um, I just pulled up on them type shit in, in, in the South End. And South End war going on. I'm knowing what's going on. I'm in tune. But I ain't really into none of that. And bro, I was with, he ain't really into none of that either. So wrong place, wrong time. We happened to um, end up getting shot at. That was kind of like a, a turning point for me where it's like, all right, let me really step this way. And that was my turning point where like, now nah, I'm doing this DJ and shit, bro. Cause like I said, I was one foot in, one foot out, still like getting booked on dumb shit, hitting licks, still doing all types of shit. Mind you, a lot of it was money. It was financially, it was, it was for money. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yep. To support my, my, my dreams and shit. You feel me? Like, I'm hitting licks to, to fucking buy DJ equipment, bro. Did you not want to get a job? Did you have nobody telling Man. you, son, you got to get a job? Or no boys working? Is that just what Man. everybody was doing? Man, I worked at a motherfucking, I worked at all the after school programs, bro. Okay. I was getting motherfucking $96 every two weeks. Yeah, and it, people don't <laughs> understand, too, when you need money now and you work, and then you got, they hold the first check. You know what I mean? Man, Can, like especially I so said, young bro. minded, you don't have that foresight to be like bro, two weeks from now. You're like, I can right. get money tonight. I was but. making $96 every two weeks. So it's like, that says it all. Yeah. So, so what would you say to people who were kind of one foot in, like they got the dream, but one foot in here, one foot in there. Does that, um, it seems like a tough, you know, line to walk. It is, it is. And if you got trouble making that decision, God gonna put something in your way mm -hmm. to where it's like, all right, you can make, he gonna give you chances, bro. God Absolutely. gonna give you chances after chances after chances. It's up to you to to decide like, all right, this is my chance. This is my way of getting out or this is my, my opportunity to take this serious or go whichever way you gonna go. Cause you can't be one foot in, one foot out for nothing. Okay. Either gonna do it or you're not. Yep. So I got my break getting shot at bro. And bro was at the, end, other, at the other end of this room, bro. I didn't get touched, bro. You get what I'm saying? That I look must have at been that. one of those God moments, like you said. And mind you, my man got shot too. My man, my man was the one who got shot. He had seen his mom walk past, right? We was in front of his crib. His mom walked past. He had her iPad. He tucked her i literally. Wow. He tucked her iPad, bro. He tucked her iPad in his waist. So you feel me? So she don't see it. Why? She's at the door. The shooter came right in front of the in front of the door, shooting at me and her son. And the bullet got caught in the iPad. iPad. That's wild. And they said if that iPad wasn't there, he would have been paralyzed or he could have died. Right. That's one of those things when you say by the grace of grace God. Grace of God. You know, I feel like everything happened for, for a reason. Yeah, we might not even ever, ever understand what the reason may be, but like it's that faith. You got to have yeah, faith. Yeah, you got to have that. faith and you got to understand like it's not your plan, it's God's plan. It's not even, at the end of the day, it's not even about you or your selfishness. Right. It's like not what can you get from this world, what can I give to the world? What exactly. can I leave it? Not yeah. what can I leave with? Because right. you ain't leaving with anything. you're not leaving with nothing, bro. When you die, none of, the, none of that it. matters but what you put into the world, bro. For sure. You know, that happens, right? That's a, a traumatic event, right? Mm -hmm. You said that kind of was what straightened you out, mm -hmm. but did you already have court things going on? Yeah, because um, eventually, I mean, yeah, things I was catch still up dealing with, with court, but it was how I, how I, I think I copped out to where it's like, I, I don't get into nothing until I'm 18. Mm -hmm. Quaff, continue without a funding. Finding, okay. um, so I had I had armed robberies, unarmed robberies, bro. You feel me? Stolen V, GTA. Long, long list as a juvenile, you get what I'm saying? I cut the deal, continue without a fund until I was 18. I was on probation until I was 18. That ended up happening. And then I'm like, all right, cool. I, mind you, this, I think this was still before I was 18. That kind of straightened me out. Finished my, 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 my probation, turned 18. And I was just like, all right, this is a fresh start. Let me take this DJing shit serious. So that's kind of the route I went, DJing mm -hmm. and then making the content and shit like that. And then you end up catching a county bid, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what happens? That's the, what, years later, but- Walk me bid. through the events that kind of lead up to that. Right after high school, I, I was making enough money to where I was able to um, provide for myself right out of high school. I was making around like $1,000 a week off of just content and DJing. Nice. Just cause all the work I put in, you yeah. feel me? Like really, Taking the shit serious. When did that content start to buzz like that where you was able, like how long does that take? And is that like, does that feel good? Where it's like, man, if I actually put my mind to this something, look what yeah, happens. Yeah, it felt good. It definitely felt good. It started to bubble in high school, like low key, like local buzz, just getting the views. So the views didn't amount to the money back then, yep. but it gave me the battery. Like, all right, bro, 
like this many people's watching me, bro. Right. Like I gotta keep going with this shit. And you gotta know at that point too, like son, this is where it's going. Right. The future right. is right. I, I seen the long game with the shit, bro. To the point where my teachers had me on Snapchat right. and shit like that, right. and they Absolutely. laughing at my shit, and I'm just like, I ain't do the homework. And they're like, you good though? You, that shit was funny. You don't even gotta do the homework. Well, huh. And I'm like, bro, I gotta keep going with this shit. <laughs> that shit took off, and I wasn't making no money like that off rip, but I, I seen the end game. You get what I'm saying? So I kept going to where I scaled my scaled it to where I was able to make money off promos. I was DJing enough to where I was making a thousand dollars a week, bro. Nice. Straight out of high school, bro. Okay. Seventeen years old. Yeah, and, that was and how many years in between high school and then high school county bid, I got booked at twenty one, twenty two. I'm doing my thing and up until then, just ups and downs with this shit. I ain't gonna make it seem like everything was here. Right, right. Um, so how does it work? Before you catch a bid, are you locked up waiting trial? You catch a case? Do you make bail? Fight it from the street? Got booked and ain't come home till now. So to speak on it a little bit. And I know you're still dealing and, with and, that. And, and, you know and, what I mean? So you don't have and to. Yeah, and I and I ain't just even say if too it's much. just how much time did um, you get? Like how um, long? It's to, like or even like leading up to trial. At any point, did you um, just want to plead out and do what you had to do? Mm -hmm. And 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 it's you don't crazy. You talk about no specifics. And it's crazy because um. I caught a case before I did my county bid. I caught a caught a case. I think a year before, mm. a year before they put me on on pretrial probation. Was on a bracelet for eight months. Ended up beating that case. Got a job. Started doing good. Getting back on the content because from being in on on house arrest and all that shit slowed me down with that. So I was getting back doing that, working. What, and, what were you doing for work and why? Why was, was that like, important um, for you just to to work to get money this time? Brought a, brought a kid into the world. That oh, kind of okay. changed my trajectory again. Had a son at 21. That yeah, was that's like, life changing. I got somebody to take care of, somebody to, yeah, take yeah, care of. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. I always had to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. So having somebody to take care of, put a different type of battery in your back and a different level of stress dealing with that, dealing with my case, house arrest, seven to seven curfew. Once I realized I was having a kid, moved out my people's crib, fucking got a luxury crib. By myself, was paying for. I don't even know how I was doing it. Damn. Paying fucking thirty two hundred a month, making do, because just growing up in my household, it was just like you have a family, like you have your own kids, you become a man. You get what I'm saying? Like you gotta have your own space, you gotta do this. So once I realized that, moved out, got my own crib, and just even that shit was stressful. Yeah. So I'm dealing with mad shit. Um, at that time, sat on the brace for eight months, just trying to figure out. Being a dad, but that's a lot. Um, a young dad Sounds at so that. So young, yeah. Absolutely. A young dad, bro. Mad shit going on too. Juggling everything. And man. that's something you can't prepare for. Like, there's mm -hmm. no book on how to be a dad. There's no book on how to be a parent. I had my dad in my life, and it still was like, damn, what the fuck do I do? Lord. <laughs> so, end up being that case at trial. So, what was that like? Like, talk about the mindset going going to trial. Like, did you not want to plead out, or did you? So, I knew I was gonna beat the case. It was just more so. It was more so the mental aspect of it, bro. Yeah. Cause it was like I was, I was at the crib, but I felt like I was in jail. And it's crazy, cause power was really in the in the in in your tongue, bro. Cause I was sitting on house arrest, like, bro, this shit's ass. Like, I can't <laughs> DJ. I can't do this. I can't go here. I can't do this. And I'm like, bro, this shit already feel like I'm in jail. Like, I might as well be right. in jail, bro. I'm like, I'd rather just be in jail, bro. Like, just send me to jail, bro. Cause that's how I was feeling. To Later, actually being in jail, like, bro, I pray they put me on the bracelet, <laughs> and, and they was not having that. Yep. So definitely be careful what you say, you know what I'm for saying? Sure. Like, that Careful ass. what you ask for, you might that just get ass, it. bro, you might just get it. So talk about that. You Eventually, you, what, you plead out to um, what? Uh, no, I beat that case and then caught a whole separate case. You okay. feel me? Caught a whole separate case, kind of same case. So I'm thinking it's about to be the same, same Go out. Go trial to beat it, you think? You feel <laughs> me? I'm like, okay, I'm about to beat this shit. They about to put me on a bracelet, and they're like... No bail. I'm like, hold oh. on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you mean no bail? You feel me? <laughs> no bail. Dangerous. Sat for four months. Indicted. Another dangerous. Sat for six months. So I'm still pre-trial, bro. Ten months in, bro. Yeah. Sitting there. Like. So Is I'm, that the same idea, too? Like, like, let me just take my time. I could be getting good time. Let me cut. I wasn't you know, even, what, I, bro, I wasn't even thinking about none of that shit, bro, at first, bro. Because I'm thinking I'm... Every month, bro, every time I'm going to court, I'm thinking I'm going home. Oh, yeah, that's like torture sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking I'm going home every single time. First month, I'm thinking I'm going home. Niggas like, no, nah, you good, bro. That Man, you going home, you going home, you going home, you going home. I'm thinking I'm going home for like six, seven months. Right. Up until 
my sentencing, bro. And and I took I copped out. I took my time at a jury at a bench trial because mm-hmm. I'm like I was facing ten years, bro, based on how the laws work and, mm-hmm. and how they how they um do the point system, bro. Like I was looking at ten years. Like I was facing ten years. Right. It was trying to give me a three to five. Mind you, when I first got booked, they're like, yeah, eighteen months. Looking at it, <laughs> parole and nine. I would have did six months, bro. I would have been home. Right. But I'm like, nigga, I'm beating this shit. I'm beating this shit. Like, I did this shit already. I'm beating this shit. I'm beating this shit. Nigga, what? Looking back. <laughs> when do you come to the realization that you're not beating it and what? that made you want to plead um, out? Was the lawyer kind of um, like, they got this, they got that. They're asking for this in a plea. Or was it just the whole, if you lose the face in the 10? It was. <laughs> like, it was, that... bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It was the accountability. Because mm. the whole time, I didn't take accountability for my actions, bro. I didn't take accountability of, you fucked up, bro. You feel me? Like, not to blame nobody. Right. And, and my situation's a little different. I don't even want to say too much. But, yeah, my situation's a little different. Like, I got towed on. You get what I'm saying? And I could have... By, like, a co-defendant? Or nah, just, no code but just got witness. towed on. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, committed a crime, got towed on. You know how this court system where, like, if you can't prove it, like, I could beat it. You feel me? It was a beatable right, right, case, right. bro. But it was just... And that's how I was thinking at first. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. They can't prove shit. They can't prove shit. And, bro, I had to take the accountability. Like, bro, not for nothing, bro. I'm here, bro. You <laughs> right, get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I did it, bro. I did it, bro. Let, let me let me take my time and let's do it, bro. Like, I had to sit down and and, and really, like, weigh the shit out, bro. It's yeah. like, nigga, they trying to give me a three to five, bro. Mind you, bro. Got a son, bro. He's, he's getting older getting now. Younger. You get what yep. I'm saying, bro? Like, I had to look at it like, all right, what they trying to give me? All right, let's let's figure this shit out. Mind you, fire my fire my first lawyer, paid lawyer. Mm-hmm. The nigga who be my lawyer who be my last one. He's telling me what I want to hear. Yeah, we're gonna beat it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sold me out, bro. You feel me? Sold me out. Um, literally sold me wow. out. He's sitting there fucking laughing with the DA and shit like that. So when you really oh, when you see that, you must be like, man, they don't care about man, me. Man. And they don't give a fuck about you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, at the same time, bro, I, I lost, bro. I ended up in the system. Mm-hmm. No matter, even if you beat the case, bro, like, I literally had to sit there for X amount of time, bro. That shit, yeah, you're never going to get back. So do you really beat the case, bro? Right. At the same time, you well, lose, you bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. lose, bro. You lose, bro. In every single way, you lose, bro. You Play stupid and... games, you win stupid prizes. You yeah, you, you won. You lose, bro. But you still got... you yep, definitely going to lose, right. bro. So I just had to take the accountability, bro. Like, bro, I did it, bro. Like, let's get it over with. That's big. The let's get it over so with, So what bro. was the what was the uh, terms? What was the plea deal? Pled out to 30 months. I think I was, I think I was 10 months in. I think I was like eight, 10 months in. I was from eight to 10 months right. in. First time getting sentenced. First time getting so you, sentenced. So you probably counting on that parole. Usually that's what I was hearing. Yeah, my first, I'm like, yo, I'm you're like, young. Right, cool. This is your first bid. You're going to get it. Yeah, like, you you, that's the only reason why I took my plea. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, I'm not doing 30 months, two and a half. I'm like, bro, I'm not doing no two so and a half. So talk about like what kind of things were you doing in there to, to better yourself? Were you doing programs? And, and like what's some things you learned about yourself while you were in there? I ain't going to lie. And this, it sounds crazy, bro. But jail was the best thing that could have happened to me, bro. Because mm-hmm. I learned so much about myself. All about the people around me, bro. And mainly the most important thing was about myself, bro. Like, I learned to take accountability. Yeah. That's something I never did in my life, bro. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like It's important. That's the most important thing, bro. As a man, bro, you got to take accountability, bro. Because it's not about what they did. You feel me? It's about what you did and how you reacted. Absolutely. You feel me? Um, accountability for your actions. Even certain things, like certain flaws that, like, if you don't. Right. If you're not accountable, right. yo, I, maybe I'm right. like this too much. Right. You can't fix it. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. Denial. Right. Right. Self-aware, bro. I became self-aware, bro. And yes, yeah, some of the things I was doing in there, working out, all the programs I had to do. Because mind you, I'm banking on parole, parole bro. Yep. I don't like. I'm banking on parole. Like I'm not thinking I got two. So and even a half though years. you you're thinking you're doing these programs for parole, I mean, did you get anything out of some of them? Because sometimes we get things by accident, man. Or did I get? What you mean? Did you like? Was there anything useful is, that you yeah. used All, as far as those every, programs? Bro, every day I sat in jail was useful, bro. Yeah. Bro, I became the best version of myself in jail, bro. Mm-hmm. You feel me? In a place where motherfuckers think you become the worst version of yourself. Yeah. You get what I'm saying, bro? Every day, I, I appreciate every day in jail, bro. Okay. Literally, because it helped me to get where I'm at now, bro. And all that shit helped, bro. Like, everything helped, bro. 
everything helped. Even just the COs being told what to do. Like, I don't like this feeling, bro. Yeah. I'll never put myself in a in a predicament to be in this situation again. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's so a wake up call. Hell yeah. Cause like I said, growing up, two weeks DYS, right. joke. Little yep. Weekend, joke. Went to Miami, got booked for the weekend, joke. Yep. <laughs> you feel me? Like all that. Continue without a fine until I'm 18, joke. Like, took the shit as a joke, bro. Mm-hmm. Had to sit down, bro. Yep. You feel me? Like, God forced me to sit down. Now, you're not getting bail. You're not going home. You have to sit down. Like, he forced me to sit down, bro. That helped me in every single aspect, bro. I was able to sit there and read. I was able to sit there and I got all these ideas. Sit there and write the shit down, yeah. bro. Sit there and become self-aware. Sit there and have a, a um, build a better relationship with, with my, my son, bro, with my, my family, bro, my sure. BM, bro. Nigga, and it's crazy because it's like I had a better relationship with my son in jail than I did on the street, bro. Right. That should tell you something you that me? you were doing something wrong out there, and, right? And exactly, like, bro, I was fucking up, bro. And yeah. I'm thinking I'm doing everything right. What about, like, getting clear-headed? Were you, like, smoking weed every day before you before you went away? Nah, like I having didn't smoke. That? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a smoker. I've been stopped doing that, but I was a drinker. I was heavy okay. on the drinking. I used to wake up. Yep. McDonald's smoothie, <laughs> put some douce in there. You feel me? I was a drinker, bro. Dead ass. Yo, that's busting, right. bro. <laughs> Yo, get you a mango. St- Man, reconstructing you. That's but it. But <laughs> if you're a drinker, bro, go get you a mango smoothie, put some douce in there, busting. There you go. So but- <laughs> t- <laughs> talk about now you go in front of the parole board. I mean, what's that experience like? I mean, are you what? you know when you're getting out? Because it's one thing to think it, though, too. It's still your life's in someone these yeah, other people's bro, hands, and, man. And that's the worst thing about getting in the system, bro. From the from the beginning, bro. Mm-hmm. Going up, standing there. People got your lives in your hands, bro. Like, hearing, oh, yeah, you might not see your kid till he's five, six. Fucking, I'm that's like, crazy, man. I left. My son was six, eight months, bro. Like, teach my son how to walk and... So Missing hearing that shit, bro, years, yeah. hearing that shit is like, nah. So definitely just, and from the beginning, bro, like, I remember my arraignment, the judge was like, well, lucky you're not here for murder. Right. One of the first things she said to me, bro, well, lucky you're not here for murder. Like, you're a killer. I can see it in your eyes. Yeah, looking back, you're lucky that you weren't in there for that, too, because <laughs> you you'd still me? be sitting there, bro. You feel me? What? It, like, I, it only takes... Come on, bro. How did it feel to get that parole, though? That must have felt good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I knew I was going to get it, bro. And I'm... So now that you finally get it, do you start developing a plan for when you get out? I had the plan already, bro. All right, so talk about what that was. I had the plan going in. You get what I'm <laughs> saying? Month in, bro, I had the plan, bro. Sitting there writing Early. down. I'm still following the same plan from two months in, bro. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Going back, looking at the shit I wrote, bro. Checking shit off, bro. Stuff I wanted to do, bro. Yeah. Checking shit off the list that I'm doing now, bro. So getting the parole was like, all right. My you already knew I was going to get the parole. Yeah. But getting the parole is like, all right, it's fourth quarter. Like, I'm about to go home. You nice. get what I'm saying? And being in the situation, bro, being in jail, that's a good and bad thing. Because mm. when you know you got parole, niggas know you got parole, too. Mm-hmm. You feel me? There's niggas there that see you got parole and going to try to fuck your shit up. COs try to fuck your shit up. Inmates try to fuck your shit up. Mind you, I, I didn't really get into nothing my whole bid, bro. I got parole. My, I mean, in my last few weeks, bro, they got like, almost got into mad shit, bro. Crazy, right? More than my whole bid, bro. Because niggas know I'm, I'm about to go home. Mm-hmm. COs know I'm about to go home. It was a good and bad thing, bro. Not a bad thing, but it right. was a, um just like a double-edged sword, bro. Did you end up hitting like the minimum or anything? A nah. CWP? And so you bro, did they, the whole tried thing. To, they tried to put me in CWP a week before I was leaving. At that point, yeah. You're like, bro, already I'm about to go home next yeah. week. Talking about CWP. And did the time start to get slower too a lot of times that happens too you cruising right through your bed bro, and then you get so the bad, parole bro. and it's like screech <laughs> my last week i did not sleep <laughs> i did not sleep filled. bro i did not sleep bro i did not sleep bro my yeah. last whole week bro, i probably did three four hours of sleep so i'm like yo this shit's dragging when did you get out on parole finally yeah i got out this summer this summer okay yeah. so what do you what have you been up to since you've been out in school full time with with the work I was doing in there, bro, I got a, I got a full ride scholarship to wow. to a four year school. Nice. And I was just doing the classes in while I was incarcerated and just taking so just the shit serious. So just talk about that. What what classes are you taking? And, man, and I was why taking school, any. Man? I was taking any class. Yeah. I was just trying to maximize my time, bro. Mm-hmm. I was trying to do anything, bro. As soon as I got sentenced, cause you couldn't do it while you was pretrial. As soon as I got sentenced, I what I'm gonna do? Sign up for all the classes. 
bro. I was in there doing yoga. I was in there doing restorative justice. <laughs> nice. bro, I'm in, in jail doing yoga, bro. Right. You get what I'm <laughs> saying, bro? <laughs> Who would have thought I'm in there doing all this? You yep. feel me? Shit like that, bro. And it's just like I was just trying to maximize my time, bro, and just make my time worth it because I'm, I'm here. Might as well do something with it. Classes was like my main thing. So does that keep you uh, busy now? It's keeping me busy. I'm just um, starting, just trying to get used to it and shit like that. But yeah, school's definitely keeping me busy and keeping my mind going and just keeping me on a, on a track because, you know, people have something they want to do mm -hmm. and then, like, they'll get their breakthrough and then and then veer off. You get right. what I'm saying? Yep. So that's kind of keeping me grounded because I said that, bro. Like, I remember I got the paper and then I called my mom. I was like, yo, she think I'm coming home. I'm like, yo, mom, <laughs> in school, bro. Like, right. you feel me? Like, I got accepted to the school. And motherfuckers was downplaying me like, bro, you going to school in jail, bro? Like, to me, bro, that was something I always wanted to do, bro. Like, for sure. I never went to college, bro. I ain't never, none of that. And I know that made my mom happy, bro. Like, hearing, like, all right, bro, he's, all right, like, I, I see the change, bro. Like, you're using your time yeah. wisely. I mean, how so, did that feel to make you, like, to see your mom feel, you know well, what I mean? That's that going to be a was, good feeling was, after. Hell yeah, bro. That was, that was one of the best feelings. And not even for my mom, it was the best feeling for me, bro. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because it's like, I wanted to go to school. I used to get on a roll and all that, bro. I'm not no smart kid. Right. But it was just like, all right, I'm going this way. So I was forced to be put in a position like, what else are you doing? You got nothing else to do but go to school. So I was That's doing that, doing the classes, bro. I feel like the only reason why I got parole is because one of the, um, I had the, the director of the education board vouching for me, yeah. bro. They wrote me a parole letter, bro. Like, you can't deny me parole. And, and I, got, I got a professor writing me a That's letter. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A, a crazy letter saying... He's this, he's that, he's that. Everything happened for a reason, bro. And for sure. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay the course right now, bro. Sticking with the school. What's into been like it. the, I know you, you had mentioned, you know, you're still getting used to it and everything. Like, what's like the biggest adjustment? Is it the People. distractions? I mean, you get caught up in the phone sometimes. I what? know you're putting out content, but man, you start scrolling. Next thing you know, 45 minutes past bro. An hour, bro. It, yeah, it gets bro. Like, cause, Cause when I first came home, I didn't even, I didn't want to touch my phone. <laughs> I came home, bro. I didn't have, I didn't. My phone was in Atlanta when I came home, bro. Mm. I didn't have a phone for a week. And that was cool because it helped me like, all right, I'm, I'm back. I'm trying to readjust, bro. Now, I get on my phone and I be like, damn. Like, <laughs> I'm, you feel me? I'm veering off, bro. But it, um, it definitely the distractions and, and more so than anything, bro, realizing like who's really for me. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That, that, that's, that's the most important thing, bro. Because... Being in jail, like, it's one thing, and then I came home, and then it's like, even being in jail, bro, like, one month, two months, yeah, bro, ah, uh, you, you getting the phone calls, you getting the pictures, you getting yeah. the visits. By month six, bro, that, Falls shit, off. that shit fall off, bro. Yep. Yeah, bro, so really realizing, like, who's really for you, bro, and who really care about you, yeah. and who really's in your corner, bro, to then coming home, and yo, bro, yo, bro, and <laughs> all of yo, bros, Miss and welcome that, home, yeah. and shit, and it's like, he realized, like, bro, I wasn't talking to none of y'all while I was booked. Like, I didn't Where speak to not one of y'all, bro. Literally. Like, my schedule, bro, I spoke to the same person, bro. I, spe I spoke to one person for months on end, bro, to the point where I didn't even speak to my parents, bro, because yeah. it was just like I, I was I was locked into what I had going on, bro. I had the schedule. I made the schedule, and it worked for me, bro. That's what's up. I, I wasn't speaking to people every day. You get what I'm saying? And it worked for me. So coming home, the motherfuckers wanted to get up and do shit like that, it, it kind of like, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way in a sense. So just realizing who's really for you, bro, was like the main adjustment that like, and I'm still adjusting now. Still fresh. Yeah, yeah I'm still still adjusting now. Just seeing like who's really for you, bro. Okay. And realizing all your friends ain't really your friends, bro. When you're trying to do something bigger than what a lot of people see, sometimes you don't need a friend. Sometimes you need a business partner, bro. And nice. that random person gonna support you a hundred times harder than your day one, your, your sandbox. So that was like one of the main adjustments, bro. Like the hardest adjustments, I yeah. would say. So say everything, you know, goes according to plan. Like you say, you came home with this plan. Where do you see yourself in five years? Five years, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a multimillionaire, bro. That's definitely. I, I definitely believe that. Um, five years, I'm gonna be a millionaire, business owner, father, bro. Mm -hmm. Everything I'm doing That's now, bro, up. just scale it. Helping bring back to my city, bro. Reconstructing the youth, bro. Absolutely. So what's, like, the best part of doing, like, the content and everything like that? Is it getting people's reactions and seeing the... You know what the best part <laughs> is? 
And, bro, I've been doing this shit so long, bro. I'm 10 years in with the content shit, bro. Like, really realizing, bro, I've made millions of people laugh, bro. Like, you feel we me? need like, that in this I world, made bro. millions of people laugh, bro. Laugh like, is I didn't, the best I didn't, medicine, bro. Me, videos I've been in, bro, like, I didn't amass over 25 million views, bro. I made millions <laughs> of people laugh, bro. Like, when I had to, when I thought about that shit, bro, I'm like, bro, I got power, bro. Even though sometimes it don't feel like it, bro, I got the power, bro. And that's something where everybody can can come together, bro. And that's why I chose the content. Mm -hmm. That's why I focus on content and the music, bro. Mm -hmm. Cause that's something we all share, bro. Yeah. Everybody loves to laugh, bro. Everybody loves to be happy. Everybody loves, and everybody loves music. It might not be, you might like rock. I right. might like hip hop. She might like freaking reggae, but it's still music, bro. Yeah. You feel me? We all had that common ground of, we like music and we like entertainment, yeah. bro. Like how it makes you feel and all right, that. Right, right, right. And all of that for sure. So, so, I use my platform, bro. I use my platform and my talent, bro, because everybody got a God-given talent. Mm -hmm. With you, my talent is something different from your talent. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And my God-given talent was I'm an entertainer, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm me. You feel me? I can't even call it, That's bro. It. <laughs> I'm me, bro. Like, I'm me. I don't fake the funk. How important is it to have that, like, individuality and that, like, it's owning this is me, thing. you know, because you can only be the best you. You can't really be nobody else. And, and people think it's competition, bro. Like, I'm not competing with nobody but myself, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm better than nobody. I just know I'm better than the person I used to be. And then that that person was better than the person before that. You get what I'm That's saying? That's what so it's about. Yep. It's all about progress, bro. And if you're making progress, even if it's even if it's this much, bro, you making that little progress a day. Mm -hmm. What's it going to look like in five years, ten years? You, you, you improve I'm yourself saying? a little bit each time, You get what I'm saying, sure. bro? And that's why I can say I'm going to be a multimillionaire in five years, bro. So why did you want to come up here and tell your story? Why is that important and for it's you, crazy. man? I didn't even want to at first, bro. I ain't <laughs> so, gonna lie, so talk bro. about what happened. Somebody said you should Hawes, come tell your shout story. Out, shout out Hawes, bro. Yep. My man's Hawes, bro. I spoke to bro. Um, mind you, I spoke to bro. It was really um, on some reaching out shit, on some spirituality, on some religion. Cause I converted to Islam while I was, I converted to Islam five days before I came home. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I, and from before I, I incarceration, I know he was, um, he was Muslim. Mm -hmm. So I came home and just wanted to, you know, tap in with him. You get what I'm saying? For sure. And he, we started talking and he brought up the podcast, bro. He was like, I think this would be good. And at first I'm like, Nah, I ain't really trying to talk, bro. Like, <laughs> you feel me? This is me fresh home. I'm like, yep. I ain't trying to talk to nobody. Like, I see what you got going on. I ain't trying to talk to nobody. I ain't really trying. And I think it was like a week later. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Mind you, I'm thinking it was something. We've been locked in. We had this locked in months oh, ago. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So, and I'm glad it came now, bro, rather than then. And that's why I say everything happened for a reason. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll definitely come up here and, 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 and. And just give my story, bro. Yeah, no, it's, and it's much appreciated. Like you said, everything happens on, on you know, God's time. And you yeah, know what I mean? And that's, that's like you said, it worked out perfect. So if there was, I don't know if there was anything that you wanted to touch on that maybe we didn't get a chance to touch on. I feel like I touched or some, on a lot. You know, some closing words, man. Yeah. Support is free. Like me, this clothing line, bro. I didn't, I didn't pay for this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But mutual, uh, you support me, I support you. Everyone... And that's, and that's something everyone could do, bro. Support is free, bro. Support sure. is free, bro. It don't show nothing. It don't show nothing to show love, bro. It don't show nothing to show love. And that's why I be saying um, free clout. And it started from it started from me being booked. But clout, once I realized that clout means influence or mm. power, especially in business or politics. Right. So when I say the free clout, free clout really means free influence. And that's what I'm just promoting, bro. Just free influence, oh, yeah. bro. Because that's all these, that's all we need, bro. Sometimes we just need that push, bro. Sure. I needed a push. Everyone needs a push, bro. And it's that influence and just support, bro. Yeah. My city, bro, city of Boston, bro. We got so many talented people, so many talented artists, bro. Crabs in a bucket mentality, bro. We got we to gotta get that up, bro. Break the cycle. Break the cycle, bro. We got so many talented artists, bro, but everyone's looking at everyone as competition, bro. Everyone's looking at everybody as, oh, I got to be better than him. Why can't mm. you be better with him? We better all together anyway, exactly, usually. Exactly, bro. Better For together, sure. bro. So that's one thing I'll, I'll end with, bro. Just support, bro, and just communicate. Learn to communicate. I was incarcerated to where I had 
to communicate. Literally, you get what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. I had to sit on the phone and, and 20 minute calls, but I'm calling them back, dealing with something, trying to um, figure something out, bro, having to communicate, bro. That and that's line. where I learned communication, bro. And that's why I say communication is crucial. Absolutely. Because that's all we need, bro. So most of the time, it's just a conversation, bro. Mm-hmm. A lot of things, times we think we things one way or in our head, when it's, it's really, really communicating not, bro. and clear Mis- things up. Miscommunication, bro. Happens so often. Miscommunication, bro. And people lose their life over it. They'll lose their freedom over it. So make sure you communicate. Speaking of communicate, make sure you drop a comment in the comment section. Like he says, support. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Make sure you go follow him on IG. Promoting, man. We promoting the YouTube, man. Um, I got a lot of shit dropping. Got a lot of content dropping. Yeah, so stay on the lookout for that, yeah, man, because yeah, you got yeah. me laughing all the time, yeah, man, and, man. And I like what you're doing, bro. And, so we're going to link it in the yeah. description, too. I'll have you send me the links for everything, too. Make yeah. sure we funnel everybody your way, bro. So once again, I appreciate you coming through to tell your story. Appreciate you, bro. All right. Appreciate you. <laughs> for sure. Guys, remember, this is the Bounce Back Podcast. It is what it is. Remember, what's next is what you make it. On that note, we out of here. I'm B. Luke. That's the guy, DJ Clout. Thanks for tuning in. Shit, man. <laughs> Whole lot of content. Bounce back. You got a moment. When they see you down.